This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Recently, you may have heard about the Premiere Pro 14.2 update. Now this thing sounds really cool, but mostly what I'm hearing about it is that it's more geared towards like Nvidia cards. And Apple is more along the lines of the AMD system, which isn't an Nvidia card. So is there really a performance improvement when it comes to Mac users who are editing on a Mac for Premiere Pro? So I tested out a few different scenarios and the results were kind of surprising depending on the type of footage that you're working with. Now Premiere has actually made a bunch of really cool improvements and, and really I'm just gonna be focusing on the GPU thing, but just to cover a couple of other really cool improvements in this update, they also have better support for ProRes RAW. So if you're shooting in that format, that's helpful to you. Better options with graphics created inside Premiere Pro, the pen tool, shapes, things like that. Audio hardware switching automatically now, which may not really sound like a big deal, but it's a pretty big deal if you're using like Bluetooth headphones or if you're switching from your laptop to like a desktop situation like this here, the audio hardware now switches automatically depending on the machine you're on. It doesn't pop up that little window that used to say, would you like to switch your audio hardware? This does it automatically and that is just such, such a lifesaver for me because I was tired of having to click and change that around. So that's really nice in this update. I even noticed that timeline scrubbing when I'm actually editing or going through footage is a lot smoother in this update. Really didn't have much of an issue with that before. I'm using an eGPU. So it's a pretty powerful graphics card I have in here. So I don't really have too many lagging issues, but it just feels more robust now, which is really nice There's a few other small changes they've made in this update I'll link the full list of updates from Adobe in the description below so you can check it out for yourself But like I said this video I'm gonna focus more on the AMD graphics side and if it's really helpful for Mac users I've heard conflicting reports that some Mac users aren't really experiencing a lot of performance improvements with this update Although from what I've heard Nvidia is the biggest jump in performance improvement with this update So more like Windows users are going to experience more so of that. Apple did not get left in the dark in this one. There's actually some performance improvements that I've noticed in my test. Now, if you haven't already performed this update, just to make sure you're ready, first you wanna download the update 14.2 for Premiere Pro. And then to turn on this feature inside Premiere Pro, you're gonna to go to preferences, media, and enable hardware acceleration decoding. And for people who are using eGPUs like me, that means that extra step of going to your application, right-clicking to get info, and selecting prefer external GPU. If you don't have an eGPU, I'm running tests on both, but first I'm gonna start with the MacBook Pro that I have. And to go over my specs before I begin these tests, I have a MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch, 2.5 gigahertz, eight core Intel i9 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the eight gigabyte AMD Radeon Pro 5500M graphic card. For these first few tests, I'm gonna be exporting on a 1440p 24 frames per second timeline. It's a five minute video with color grade and effects applied, like film grain, things like that. On my first test with mixed footage, that's both the H.265 from my Fuji X-T3 and then my B-Roll from my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Before the update, it took seven minutes and 25 seconds with software encoding. After I downloaded and installed the 14.2 update, it took five minutes and 21 seconds. So obviously there's definitely an improvement going with hardware encoding first off, but we already knew that. What's odd is I ran this exact same test on the previous update, so the 14.0 update with hardware encoding, and that one took five minutes and 24 seconds to export. Compare that to the new update that got five minutes and 21 seconds, and you'll notice that that's a three second difference, which, kind of blew my mind. I was like, what is going on? So I tried another test. This time I tried a 1080p timeline, four minute video, 24 frames per second, color grade and film grain applied. On the old version of Premiere 14.0, I got five minutes and 12 seconds. On the new update 14.2, I got five minutes and 16 seconds. So now we're four seconds longer on the new update. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, something's going on. So I run another test. I did a 1080p timeline, 24 frame per second video. It's gonna be three minutes long, B-roll footage that is color graded and film grain applied. The old version got four minutes and 46 seconds and the new update 14.2 got four minutes and 48 seconds. So now we're two seconds longer. So at this point I'm thinking, where's the improvement for me? Where's the improvement for Mac users? Did, did we get left out in this update? And then I started thinking, well maybe I should actually use some H.264 footage from my A7S too. And this time, I saw a big difference. For this test, I did a three minute timeline, 1080p, 24 frames per second, color graded, film grain applied. The old version of Premiere, the 14.0, took two minutes and seven seconds to export. The new version, 
took only one minute and 33 seconds to complete the same exact export. Finally, you can see the difference. That's a 25% difference in export. And that is such a big number considering all I did was just update the software to the newest version. So now that we know that the performance improvement is with the H.264 footage, but I wanted to see if this update actually benefited people who are using eGPUs in the MacBook. I probably got the most interesting results out of this entire test from just the eGPU. Now, if you're new to this channel or if you're new to eGPUs, eGPU, you can actually connect up an external graphics card with Macs. So I actually switched out a couple years ago my entire system. I had the iMac and then I had my MacBook, but I just wanted to have the one thing and just drop it when I came home and hook it up to a more powerful monitor and a system. And that's where the eGPU came into play. So I did a whole video on that whole experience. So if you're interested in looking into eGPUs for your MacBook and things like that, you can check that out on my previous video. I'll link that up there somewhere. But testing out the eGPU with this update was quite surprising. I'm gonna go ahead and share those results, but before I do, I just wanna give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. Now, Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons, they can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and even introduce you to a community of millions. Now, recently, I've been taking some classes on Skillshare, and one that I found really cool was the do-it-yourself green screen for film by Paul Trillo. You can get started in cool visual effects and exploring unique like green screen effects for your next project. I thought that was definitely worth it so check that one out. And the other one I checked out recently I really liked was how to make merch with Draplin by Aaron Draplin. It's another class that I enjoyed taking and I think just seeing Aaron's passion and design and creating just really inspires me as a fellow creative. And as we all grow as editors and filmmakers, a creative challenge or productivity class may help inspire you to set small goals and maybe stir some creativity. Skillshare is affordable with a yearly subscription being less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. You'll find the link and the information in my description below. Okay, so before this test to break down the eGPU setup and the specs for that, I have it hooked up to an eight gigabyte Radeon RX Vega 56 card inside my breakaway box. My first test with this eGPU is the same test that I ran initially at the beginning of this video. It's the five minute mixed footage, 1440p, 24 frame per second timeline, H.265 footage on it and B-RAW footage as well on this. And it is film grained and color graded as well. Before the update on the Premiere Pro 14.0, I got an export of seven minutes and 52 seconds. After the update on the 14.2, I got the same export in six minutes and 52 seconds. And you may be thinking, well, that's not really a whole lot, or maybe it is something impressive to you, but I think more so what's the most impressive about this test is keep in mind that on the MacBook Pro, we saw really no benefit on H.265 footage and B-RAW footage. It was just in the eGPU that we saw a difference with B-RAW footage. So if that's the case, using an eGPU and if you're working with Blackmagic raw footage, this is actually a really, really cool feature. Now I did the same H.264 test with the eGPU that I did before with the MacBook where we saw most of the improvement. It's the three minute timeline, 1080p, 24 frame per second, all H.264 footage, it's film grained and color graded. And before the update on the 14.0 Premiere Pro, it took three minutes and 52 seconds to export this. Now check this out. After the update on Premiere Pro 14.2, this exact same test took one minute and 16 seconds. That's almost three times faster. The first export, three minutes and 51 seconds versus one minute and 16 seconds. That is a mind blowing change. And being able to export my H.264 timelines three times faster, that is massive. That is a big game changer. I think for those who are on the fence about this update should, should consider a couple things before actually updating. One, are you mostly working with H.264 clips on timelines? Because if so, that's where we're seeing the biggest improvement from this. Two, are you working with an eGPU? Because there's obviously a difference in the eGPU system as opposed to just using your internal graphics card in the MacBook Pro. And three, are you actually working with a supported graphics card? And Adobe has like their recommended cards. They have a whole list of them. I've also linked that in the description below so you can check out and see if yours is on there as well. I mean, if you, if you tick any of those boxes at all, I think this update is 
absolutely worth it. I would recommend definitely checking it out and see if it's right for you. You can always go back to older versions, so try it out for yourself. If this video was helpful to you, consider liking this video. It really helps the channel. Consider subscribing to this channel for more filmmaking and editing videos just like this one with post notifications on. And until next time, guys, that's a wrap.